Yeah. We'll see. There we go. Hey, good morning, church. It's great to see you. Welcome to Peace Street. We're so glad that you are here. Uh, we welcome those that are watching right now online as well. We hope that you'll start to say hello in the chat and uh, and let us know where you are watching from. I already see that uh, Ruth Walters, Liz Fernwalt, uh, Alex Fernwaltz and others are, are tuning in right now. So, uh, so please say hello as you uh, as you log on and as you tune in. Uh, we will be celebrating communion uh, today, so hopefully uh, you got a bag with some of the communion elements and and hold on to that bag because we'll use that to also um, dispose of the cup uh, and the foil after you have taken communion, uh, and then you can put that in a receptacle out in the lobby. Uh, before we uh, begin worship. Uh, though, uh, I, I do want to invite us to be uh, in prayer for a very dear family to this church, and uh, I trust that they're uh, watching now or they might watch later, uh, but that's the Clayton family. Uh, you, you know for several weeks uh, we've sent out in the prayer chain and have lifted up uh, most recently this past week uh, Jim Clayton, uh, who uh, was beginning hospice care uh, at the hospital at Methodist, and uh, I think on Friday had the ability to go home, which was great news because they were trying to wean him off uh, oxygen. Uh, but we received word this morning uh, that Jim passed away last night. And I had a chance to talk with Marsha, his wife, uh, before coming into worship. And so we will be getting more details to you soon. Um, but if we can, uh, just right now, um, have a moment of silent prayer for Marsha Clayton, uh, for Jim Clayton, uh, for his soul to be at rest now uh, in the arms of our Heavenly Father, and for us to be in prayer for that entire family. Uh, so if you will, uh, let, let's have a moment of silence and I'll end that time with a prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for your servant, Jim Clayton for all the ways in which he has loved you and served your kingdom. We pray for Marcia, we pray for her children, her grandchildren and great-grandchildren and for the tremendous loss that they feel right now. And we ask, Lord, that you would walk alongside this family in their grief as they have said their goodbyes and as they now prepare for a service which would honor and remember his life. And may we continue to tell stories of the love that we felt from Jim for his friendship, for all the things that he's done for your kingdom here on earth. And now, God, we ask that you would receive him into your arms and give him peace. We pray this in the name of our Savior, who rose so that we might have eternal life. Amen. Thank you, friends. And if you know the Claytons uh, personally, I hope that you'll reach out to them at some point today. Uh, and if Marsha, if you, Jamie, Jimbo are, are watching right now, just please know how much we love you. Uh, and we will continue to be in prayer for you. And friends, we will get that information to you soon uh, about a memorial service or service of remembrance. We'll invite you now. Uh, as we continue to look to the cross, as we think about the death of Jesus Christ, as we think about our own mortality, uh, but we also think about how great it is to have the grace uh, and the love and the joy of Jesus Christ in our hearts, how great is God's faithfulness to us. Uh, we, we invite you to, to ponder those things and to now stand as you're able as we sing our opening hymn.
shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. morning. I'm Shannon, and I'd like to welcome you to Peace Tree. We're so glad you're with us in person and online. If you're worshiping on Facebook Live, be sure to like the video, say hello in the chat, and let us know where you're joining us from today. We'd like for everyone to take out your phones and check in on Facebook. Thanks to our partnership with a different charity each month, we're able to make a donation for each Facebook check-in at Peace Tree. We are almost to our goal of 100 check-ins um, to support this month's partner, WOTC. So if you'd like to check in, all you have to do is open up the Facebook app on your phone, click on the phrase, what's on your mind, and then choose check in. Type Peace Tree UMC in the search bar and update your status before posting. This month, we've been partnering with the nonprofit organization, WOTC. WOTC is making healthcare a reality for everyone by getting funds directly to people in need of life-changing treatment. Whether that's surgery for a child who's not able to walk or eye treatment for a grandparent who longs to see their grandchildren. Every Facebook check-in and review at Peacetree this month will go towards our contribution to WOTC's life-changing surgeries. Be sure to use the hashtag change a life so that others can learn more about this month's cause. Open play for pickleball is back in the gym. Pickleball players of all skills are invited to join in with others as we utilize all three courts on Monday and Wednesday mornings from 9 a.m. until noon. Pickleball lessons have been taught by our friend Don Gary on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and now we're adding Mondays and Wednesdays to the class schedule. These new classes will be led by church members Dusty and Jessica Fahey. 
We also had a great crowd show up for our pickup basketball this past Wednesday night, with even more confirmed for this week. Basketball games begin at 7.30, and we're exploring ways to add Zumba to our fitness offerings. If you're interested, then let us know by texting Zumba to 901-286-5532. Please mark your calendars for April 14th's Monday Thursday service. We'll sing songs that prepare us for Good Friday, hear a message from Dr. Durbin, and celebrate communion together. The service begins at 6.30 and is open to the community, so invite your friends. And be on the lookout for more information regarding a meditative service on Good Friday that will be held midday. We've never hosted a Good Friday service at Peachtree, so if you have the day off from work or school, we hope you'll join us for the special service on April 15th. Thanks again for worshiping with us in person and online. Please stand now as we sing our next song, Oh Praise the Name.
Right now, we're going to take a moment to offer our gifts back to God. Our ushers are walking around with the offering plates, but if you'd like to make a gift using your cell phone, please visit peacetree.church forward slash give. If you're writing a check, please make it out to Peace Tree. And if you're watching from home and you'd like to mail in your tithes and offerings, please send your gifts to 9315 East Shelby Drive, Carterville, Tennessee, 38017. Thank you so much for your generosity. Our church will be hosting the Guatemalan Mobile Consulate next weekend, Saturday, April 2nd, and Sunday, April 3rd. This event assists hundreds of our neighbors and their children. These families already live and work in Memphis and the surrounding areas, and the consulate helps ensure that documents, passports, and other important papers are up to date. Parents can also apply for their children's passports and open bank accounts in their home country in order to send money home to their relatives. We still have several volunteer areas that need to be filled. So if you're able to serve next weekend, please click on the Guatemalan mobile consulate box on the homepage of our church website, peacetree.church, and invite friends, classmates, and coworkers to join us. And if you plan to worship at Peace Tree in person next Sunday, please park in as many of the western parking spots as possible and enter through either the west entrance or the north entrance since the consulate will be utilizing the gym, fellowship hall, and main entrance. Thank you for assisting our Guatemalan neighbors over the past seven years and thank you for volunteering this weekend as we finally have the opportunity to host this important event. Now will you pray with me? Long-suffering God, as we bring our gifts this day, we do so in the humble gratitude and recognition that any and all blessings in our life come as your gift of grace. Help us to share our treasure with others, to see our neighbors as fellow siblings in your family, and to care for those in need. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Now, we'd like to invite our Peace Tree kids and all of those who are young at heart to join us on the front steps for a children's mo moment with Pastor Chris. Hey. Actually, I'm gonna grab this microphone up here because Y'all might have some answers for me uh, this morning. So good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. That was, that was a decent good morning. Let's see if, uh, if our congregation can give a good morning. So uh, good morning, adults. Good morning. Uh, that was, y'all want to try to outdo them one more time? All right, good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. Yeah, I think they won. I think they won that one. The, the good morning battle. All right. Well, it's so good to see each and every one of you this morning. I've got a, a, a quick question, and you can, if you want to answer with the microphone, let me know, and I'll, I'll put it in your face. If not, then that's fine, too. I'm, I'm wondering, who are the members of your family? Who are the members of your family? Any of us can go up first. Mommy and Daddy. Okay, so Mommy and Daddy are members of your family? The whole church. Ooh, the whole church. Members of your family. All right, Brooklyn. Your cousins. Cousins, yeah. You got to see your cousins over spring break, right, Harrison? Oh, we're coming back to Ava. Girl Scouts. Oh, Girl Scouts. That's right. You're, is, is it a troop? Is it a Girl Scout troop? Yeah, your troop. All right. What, who, else, who else are members of your family? Okay, uh, Max, I saw you start to put your hand up. You want to... God and Jesus. Okay, God and Jesus. We're going to talk about what it means to be part of the same family as God and Jesus. Any, any other takers? Any other takers as to members of your family? 
The whole world? The whole world. He's got the whole world. All right. These are all great answers. And this is what we're going to be talking about today uh, as I share my message in just a few moments is essentially, you know, who are the members of our family and what makes a family a family? For some of us, uh, family is, is somebody that we're re related to by blood. Sometimes it's uh, a family a family member is somebody who's been adopted into a family. Uh, sometimes your family is uh, somebody who you're really close to. Maybe it's a best friend. Maybe it's somebody that's in your pack or in your troop. But this is what's really special special about Jesus and about um, what he did for us. Because of Jesus Christ, we can all be a part of God's family. We're all a part of God's family thanks to what Jesus did for us on the cross. Because you see, there was a moment when he uh, looked at his mom and he said that the disciple that was next to her was now her son. And then he looked at his friend and he said, my mom is now your mom. Is that, is that kind of cool to, to think about having an extra mom or an extra dad or an extra brother or sister in your life? You know, when we get married, if you get married as an adult, you gain a, you gain a, a new family. And sometimes parents say that they got another son or they got another daughter or they get their first son or their first daughter in their family. And so when you think about who the friends are in your life and you think about your cousins and your brothers and sisters and your moms and dads and your grandparents and your best friends and how they're all part of your family, just remember that thanks to Jesus and what he did for us, we can all be a part of God's family. So will you bow your heads and will you bow your heads uh, as well? And re repeat this, uh, this prayer after me, boys and girls. Uh, dear God, dear God thank, you thank you for your son. Because of Jesus, because of Jesus we, can we can all be a part of your family. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks boys and girls. Y'all can head back to your seats. All right, and as they head back to their seats, uh, I will just share a word and say that uh, we've got some other students that are heading back right now, and that's from uh, Lakeshore uh, Camp and Retreat Center. We had a th our three of our confirmands uh, head there with a, a mom and two of our young adult uh, chaperone mentors and uh, got a couple of pictures this morning uh, there by the lakeside with the Lakeshore Cross and uh, looks like uh, lots of smiling faces, uh, got, a, got a picture of Tyler uh, shooting hoops on the very first night. I think like he might have set his stuff down in his in his cabin and then immediately found a basketball. Um, but I've heard some good things, heard that they uh, had a great time. And I imagine with it being 1028, there's, they're probably doing a final session or morning worship and then going to have lunch and hit the road. So if you can, uh, around 12 noon today, be sure to, to lift up a prayer for our confirmands as they make their way back home from a Lakeshore. Uh, I said hello to friends earlier that were watching online uh, mentioned Gladys Adams and the Fernwaltz, but uh, also hello to Ruth Walters, Bonnie Gay, Peggy Walker, the Geary family, Gene Craig. We've got 17 devices that are streaming here at some point, but also the Stonebrooks. Uh, and so we're uh, extremely happy for Nick and Kristen Stonebrook, if you know them, uh, because they have just welcomed uh, into the world Sterling, baby Sterling, Kenneth Stonebrook, their uh, firstborn son. And so we are uh, so excited for them and glad that y'all are worshiping with us online. And speaking of families, uh, to uh, all of our Peace Tree families that are here right now, if you'd like to uh, join us in the gym after worship, we're going to enjoy some family fun with uh, some games, uh, with some pizza, and that's going to be after worship today. So be sure to save for pizza, for games, and a chance to meet other families uh, that are uh, part of our church, other students who are part of Peace Tree Kids. That's happening right after uh, worship today. Will you join me for a prayer? Dear God, as we consider the children whom we've just seen here at the front, as we think about our confirmands, as they make their way back home, and we think about loved ones and friends who are sitting near us right now, may we be mindful about uh, your family and what it means to be a part of your family. 
for uh, the love that you've shown us, for the invitation to, to accept your son into our hearts, to love our neighbors as ourselves, to put you first and foremost in our lives, and to receive those whom we might have never met, those that we would never have thought of as family, and yet, Lord, you redefine those things for us. Help us to see today's scripture with new eyes, and may it speak directly to us now. May the words I preach not be my own, but yours. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to jump right into today's uh, passage, which comes from the Gospel of John. It's chapter 19, verses 25 through 27, so just three verses. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, I'm going to be honest, friends. I've always found it a little troublesome that Mary is not named by her name in the Gospel of John. If you read through the Gospel of John, it never says Mary and Joseph. It never, ne never says, uh, you know, uh, Mary. So then Mary pondered these things in her heart. That's not in the Gospel of John. Even here, as Jesus is looking at his own mother, he doesn't say mom. You know, he's, he, he might say Abba, Father, when he's crying out to God. But he doesn't say mom. He doesn't say ma. He doesn't say mama. He doesn't say mum. He doesn't say mummy. He says woman. <laughs> Woman, here is your son, and now here is your mother. It always bothered me because she's so important. And without her yes, without her faith, without the trust that she placed in God, we, would any of this have happened? Well, it wouldn't have happened the way it did. I give thanks for Mary, and yet John doesn't include her name in his gospel account of Jesus's life. But we've been reading through this book, Witness at the Cross. We've been using it for our Thursday morning pastor's Bible study. And because of some of the things that were shared in our most recent chapter, I've been able to reframe some of the things we see in John when it comes to unnamed individuals. I've reframed it in a different way. It's helped me to think about this lack of a name differently, thanks to Amy Jill Levine and her Bible study. So in today's passage, not only do we see the mother of Jesus and we see these other Marys and we see her own sister there at the foot of the cross, but we also see the disciple whom Jesus loved. Imagine if that was on your name badge, the disciple whom Jesus loved. But we would simply call that disciple the beloved disciple. The beloved disciple. And there are some theories behind who it might be. I think the most commonly held belief is, well, this is John, the last living eyewitness to the events of the Gospels, to the events of Jesus' life. This is, this is clearly John. Well, you know, uh, scholars got a scholar, and they got to dig, and they got to theorize, and they got to ask these important questions. And some have asked the question, well, well what if it in instead was Lazarus? You know, because we really don't get a name for the beloved disciple. We just see it as the disciple whom Jesus loved. What if it was Lazarus? One of his best friends, the one whom Jesus wept for, the one who was raised from the dead, and then after that occurs, we, we really don't see Lazarus anymore. He's not in the story, and that was such a pivotal moment. It showed that Jesus could bring back somebody 
been dead for more than three days. It sets up his own resurrection and how God the Father revives his life and brings him back from the grave. Well, maybe it was Lazarus. If uh, you're a, a Dan Brown fan and, or a Tom Hanks movie fan, you've seen The Da Vinci Code, and you would see that that theory has posited that, well, in fact, it was Mary Magdalene. And the early church would not give such a prominent role to a woman, and so they had to uh, mask, mask that with, by saying she was a man, the disciple whom Jesus loved. And so if folks have considered that, it makes for an interesting thought experiment when you think about uh, the disciple whom Jesus loved laying their head upon Jesus' bosom. That's, that's in the Gospels, when they're reclining at the Last Supper. It makes you think, well, who would rest their head on Jesus' chest? Do I feel comfortable with that being Mary Magdalene? Do I feel comfortable with that being John, the son of Zebedee? Do we just not feel comfortable as bros hugging it out in the United States, where we can't embrace somebody that we really love and are friends with, and and to have that kind of a physical touch. She asks a lot of good questions in this Bible study, and we had a chance to think through some of these this past Thursday. But what it did for me is it made me think about Mary not being named. She's just referred to as the mother of Jesus. This beloved disciple is just referred to as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And then we considered all these other people who remain unnamed in the Gospels. Both the historical figures, actual people who lived and breathed and walked on this earth, as well as people that are in the parables, and they're in the stories that Jesus told. And so, for, for instance, the woman at the well, or the Samaritan woman at the well. So she's, she's known by her ethnicity, she's known by her gender, and she's known by uh, a task that she was performing for her family. But we never get her name. We just talked about the centurion. We don't know the centurion's name. We've talked about the other victims or the thieves. We don't know their names. Now, we, we've attributed names to them throughout history because we want to know the name, but what about the dead girl? And she's just known as the dead girl or the paralyzed man or the man who was blind, born blind, you know, blind from birth. the demon-possessed man. The demon had a name. The demon's name was Legion, because we are many. But we don't know about this naked guy that's just hanging out in graveyards. What was his name? We don't have these names. And yet, because we don't have the names, all of these individuals allow us to find ourselves in the story. We can find ourselves in the story by placing ourselves in the spot of an unnamed person. And so perhaps John the Gospel writer in that community that composed this telling of Jesus' life purposely left Mary as an unnamed person only with the designation of the mother of Jesus so that we might see ourselves in her experience so that we might place ourselves in the story. I know not everyone here is a mother, but we have several mothers that are here with us today. We have several that are watching online. We have new moms, moms-to-be, those that hope to become mothers one day. And so I want you to ponder this. If you're a mother, how would you feel if you saw your child hanging on a cross? How would that make you feel to see your child put to death, executed in that way? What would you want to do as a parent if you were just steps 
away from your dying child, but your life was threatened by the enemies that surrounded you, by those who were watching to see who would challenge us, who's going to step out of line. He's right there. I can touch his feet. And yet I have to stay away. What would you do? How would you feel if you were a parent in that situation? We aspire to imitate Jesus. We try to be perfect as Christ is perfect. And so I invite you to consider what it would have felt like for you to be on the cross. He took our place. We all deserve the cross. So what if you were up there? Maybe in the prime of your life, looking down at the woman who gave birth to you, crying out in agony, in pain, because her baby is being executed. To see her watching hopelessly as the final breaths <sighs> escape your body. What would you want to do in that moment to ensure that she would be cared for once you were gone? There's not a, a chance to call up your life insurance broker to make sure you've left enough, to make sure there's enough in savings. And yet you see your best friend who never left your side and is not leaving your mom's side. And this beloved disciple, whomever this person was, is hearing from their rabbi, from God incarnate, the son of God himself. This is now your mother. He makes this final request. This is now your mother. Even as he was dying, Jesus was transforming our world. He was rewriting the way we do things. He was redefining family. And he was offering a new purpose to those who followed him. This is now your mother. Friends, we are drawing closer and closer to the cross. We're drawing closer to Holy Week, to Maundy Thursday, to Good Friday. And when you think of the crucifixion, where do you see yourself in that scene? Are you to the left or right of Jesus as a thief, as a victim? Are you a soldier who has gambled in order to take the clothing off of Jesus' back? Are you a mother who has lost her son? Maybe you're a follower of Jesus who's been called to love those around them, who's been called to form a new type of family. I pray that you can see yourself in this story, that you can feel the pain and the great loss and the grief that Mary, the mother of Jesus, would have felt. But I also pray that you would count yourself as a beloved disciple. Maybe as you read that gospel, and you see the disciple whom Jesus loved, you would think, I could be that disciple. That could be me. That unnamed disciple in the story, that's where I am. The one whom Jesus loves and the one who Jesus now calls to extend Christ's love while at the same time inviting others in to God's 
new family. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. I'm gonna invite Dr. Durbin to join me here at the altar as we celebrate communion. I hope that you have your communion packets uh, with you. And uh, if you don't, uh, we can get those to you. As we go through the liturgy, the words are going to appear on the screen for you. And, and I would also say that uh, this table is not Peace Tree's table. It is not the table of the United Methodist Church. This is the Lord's table. And so however you are coming to us today, if you believe in God, if you believe that God loves you and that there's a place for you here at this table, which I believe, then we invite you to receive communion uh, this morning and we'll give you directions in a little while for how to open it up and how to uh, get to the wafer and get to the juice. But we invite you to now be in an attitude of prayer as uh, Dr. Durbin gives us the invitation. This is indeed a holy table and we've come to receive these wonderful gifts with thanksgiving. Hear this generous invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Would you pray with us? Merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We, we have, have failed, failed to be an obedient, obedient church. church. We, we have, have not done, done your will. We, we have, have broken your law. law. We, we have, have rebelled against, against your love. We, we have, have not loved, loved our neighbors. neighbors. And we, we have, have not heard, heard the cry of the needy. needy. Forgive, Forgive us, us, we pray. pray. Free, Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. Uh, friends, I, I realize because of the times that we live in, it is, uh, it's tough to pass the peace. But I'm going to invite you to simply stand where you are and to consider the people that are you're in uh, immediate vicinity, to not walk across the, the sanctuary. If you are a, uh, an elbow person, extend your elbow. If you're knuckles, then extend, extend the knucks out. If you want to give a hug or a handshake, uh, make sure that the person near you is comfortable with that. But it's been quite a while since we've been able to pass the peace of Jesus Christ. So we'll invite you, if you feel comfortable, to stand uh, and to take a few moments to do that now. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Continue to follow along and do the, the speaking part for the congregation. Is that does that work for you? So when I do the and, and Maybe also do the and dark, also with you. Lead the dark yeah. yeah. All right. You may be seated. Thank you, church. We will now continue with uh, the great thanksgiving. And again, the words will be up on the screen. Our, my words will be in white, and Dr. Durbin will be with y'all uh, as you read the, the words that are in yellow. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being and called them good. 
From the dust of the earth, you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, you bore up the ark on the water, saved Noah and his family, and made covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, you gave us your commandments and made us your covenant people. When your people forsook your covenant, your prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and on your holy mountain... He heard your still, small voice. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of, of power, power and might, might. Heaven, heaven and our earth, earth are full, full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from our sin, your spirit led him into the wilderness where he fasted 40 days and 40 nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on a cross for our sin, you raised him to life, presented him alive to the apostles during 40 days and exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now, when we, your people, prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance for sin and the cleansing of our hearts, that during these 40 days of Lent, we may be gifted and graced to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, and he gave thanks to you. He gave the cup to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together using the words on the screen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I'm going to invite you to, to take this packet and just the top clear layer. If you can peel back the top clear layer in order to get to the wafer. And hold it there, don't pop it in your mouth yet, don't, uh, don't break it in two yet. But this right here is the body of Jesus Christ that has been broken for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Let us now all partake of the body of Jesus. And if you will now, peel that purple foil. It's 
to reveal the juice. And this juice is the blood of Christ that's been poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let us all now partake of the blood of Jesus. Let me offer a prayer as we close out this time of Holy Communion. Uh, Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself to us. Grant that we may go in the world in the strength of your Holy Spirit to continue to spread your love, to be the hands and feet of Jesus, to continue to fast and pray during these 40 days of Lent. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Durbin. And I'll invite our worship team back up to the front. And it's been uh, a few moments since we've sung, and so we might need to uh, warm up our vocal cords one last time. And so uh, I'm going to invite you to stand. And before we sing this final hymn, uh, I'd like us to sing a song that I think we all know uh, for a young man that's going to be turning five years old tomorrow. And that is Oliver Hampton over here, uh, who's turning five, so y'all be sure to say happy birthday to him. He had his birthday party yesterday with some friends. So if you will, on three, let's sing happy birthday to Oliver on three. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Oliver. Happy birthday to you. All right, happy birthday, Oliver. It's, it's great to see our children grow up right before our eyes, and uh, it is uh, such a pleasure and a, and a joy and a gift to be a part of God's family. Amen? All right, well, let us, uh, as we continue to journey through Lent, as we continue to look to Holy Week and to Good Friday, uh, let's end this time now uh, with a classic hymn, uh, one that's dear to, to many of us, The Old Rugged Cross. See.
Amen. Friends, take a, a moment to just look around you at this family. This is God's family. And I see young men celebrating their fifth birthday. I think about Jim Clayton, who has exchanged the old rugged cross for a crown. I think about families. I think about extended families and what it means to be part of God's family. And I pray and I hope that you will continue to find ways to support each other this week, to encourage one another as we fast and pray, as we journey to the cross and to Good Friday, and to consider the unnamed people that are out in the world who need love, who need a mom or a son or a daughter or a father, and to put yourself into the story as you read scripture this week. Where are you? Where are you in God's story? Because you have a place, I have a place, because we are all part of God's family. Go now in peace. Amen.